Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the uh, SACAC special interest group meeting for public school counselors. We're really glad that you made time to, uh, in your very, very busy schedules, to be here today for this uh, discussion. Uh, wanted to talk a little bit about you know, how to better manage caseloads, large caseloads in this admission season, uh, in addition to how to maybe leverage some newer technologies uh, to make life a little bit easier and more efficient. Uh, Want to take a quick minute to introduce ourselves and, and, and our presenters. Uh, first, we'll start off with our uh, SACCAC public school counselor uh, lead, uh, uh, Kimberly Brown. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. So, um, there are three courageous leaders here for the SACAC Public School Counselors um, Special Interest Group, and I'm grateful to get to work with Miles and Kelly this year. My name is Kimberly. I am a public school counselor in Greenville, South Carolina, and um, have really enjoyed membership in SACAC and just wanted to get more involved. And so here I am working with Miles and Kelly to support public school counselors. So we look forward to working with you all through this year and looking forward to supporting you any way that we can. Kelly, would you like to? Uh, yeah, abs absolutely. Um, yeah, so my name is Kelly Schaefer and I am a uh, college counselor here at Triangle Math and Science Academy that is in Apex, uh, North Carolina, right outside of Raleigh. And um, I wanted to get involved in this group because SACAC has been a really important part of my professional journey uh, the whole time I've been a school counselor. And I found it to be a really invaluable resource for me. And we kind of came upon this topic because working with really large caseloads and there's just so many resources and so many things out there to help you in your day to day life. And so we wanted to make this a really practical um, webinar for you to kind of come away with some actual strategies you can use in your day to day work. Um, and so I'll turn it back over to Miles. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, again, my name is Miles Robinson. I'm a college counselor at Raleigh Charter High School in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, this is my fourth year in college counseling. In my previous life, I actually was um, an academic advisor for at, uh, several universities. And so uh, really fortunate to kind of translate those skill sets into this current role working with high school students. Um, and again, just looking forward to learning uh, some new traits, some new new uh, tricks of the trade, if you will. And so uh, first, we're going to go ahead and have uh, Veronica introduce herself and uh, talk a little bit about uh, her background and the, uh, the advising core and, and working with our public schools. So uh, Veronica, if you could go ahead and just kind of uh, kick it off for us, uh, maybe say, you know, roughly about uh, 20, 25 minutes and then maybe break for a short Q&A. Uh, this is an invitation to our attendees to uh, put some questions in the Q&A uh, as we, uh, in real time, um, as we approach that Q&A portion later on, we'll break and ask Veronica some questions before she has to go. And then we'll have Lily Fang from College Vine uh, take up the second half of the presentation. Sound good, everybody? All right, Veronica, please take it away. Thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, of course. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Veronica Tapia, and I am the founding program director for UNCW College Advising Corps at UNC Wilmington. Um, so my perspective is going to be really coming from a college access lens. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get my um, my slide deck up here. Um but just a little bit about me. So I actually was a college advisor myself with NC State College Advising Corps um, back in 2015. So it's been a little bit of time, but I served for two years and I served at Heidi Trask High School in Pender County, um, which is in Eastern North Carolina. So I got to actually do some of the college advising in a high school setting. And then I also... Um, you know, then just kind of worked my way into um, just different college access organizations, Upward Bound, and now I'm back with College Advising Corps as a program director, overseeing advisors who are performing this kind of work. Um, so just a little bit of background, because some of you all actually might have access to a college advisor in your high schools. Um, 
whether it's through our program or different programs, the work is all exactly the same. And basically what our advisors are doing is they're serving it at their high schools full time um, and they're doing college advising with mostly seniors, but we do take a whole school approach. Um, so any student is welcome to come and to receive our services. It's not like, you know, you have to do an application like the TRIO programs. Anybody is eligible to receive these services. We do a bat best match and fit model. So we're not pushing college all the time. We understand that that's not, you know, the best for everybody. So we really just kind of try to figure out what the student's preference is and then just try to figure out a plan for them from there. Um, and so then our advisors are really expertly trained to help their students with college applications, financial aid applications, just like really the entire college application process from start to finish. Um, and so, of course, as you all probably already know, family engagement is a really big part of that. Um, and so we're just going to kind of talk a little bit about what has really worked for us in our programs. Also understanding that you all may very well be at schools that do not have college advisors or have this extra resource. So kind of trying to take a more practical approach to how do you kind of add this on to uh, your already very full caseloads. So uh, just kind of like a high level overview of, of what we'll, we'll talk about um, and what's kind of worked for us. Um, so definitely relying on those collaborations and partnerships in our communities and regionally, um, hosting college theme events and workshops at the schools. And then these would be more for our students that are like in the classroom. How can we use class time and maximize that? So we do some in-school initiatives there. Um, and then of course the one-on-one -on -one advising, which our students have said themselves is the most effective in terms of them actually getting to, you know, learn about their post-secondary options and follow through. So we're gonna start kind of like at a micro approach and then just kind of zoom out a little bit. But in terms of one-on-one -on -one advising, um, so a lot of school counselors I have learned just in terms of like the schools that we partner with, they have senior meetings with their students to kind of go over graduation requirements and, uh, you know, credits and all those things. So I would really recommend setting aside just three to five minutes to just ask the student, what are your plans for after high school? It's not a leading question. We're not asking them if we're if they're thinking about college, if they're thinking about joining the workforce, but just what do you have planned? And just kind of seeing what they say and taking some time to kind of really understand what is driving that want. Or a lot of times, as we know, the answer is, I don't know. So kind of getting, um, into like what they might be eligible for in looking at their transcripts and their GPAs. And as we're doing that, we know that the students that come to see us are usually, you know, sometimes like those top performers, they're like always in your office. What we really want to make sure that we're doing though is uh, making time for those students that typically fall through the cracks. The ones that are not the stellar students but they do meet, you know, those those GPA requirements for four year institutions and have a very real shot, um, you know, of going to college. Um, the biggest barrier is typically for our students, they're not even considering college because of cost. So depending on, you know, if you're working at a Title I high school or if you do have, you know, a good number of students who um, are from low income backgrounds or would be the first in their families to attend college. This is a really good time for you to kind of um, unpack like what they're thinking about and start planting those seeds of what their potential um, really could lead them to. Um, so they often will take a little extra time, a little extra nudge to really kind of like encourage them. So identifying those students earlier will really kind of help you out in terms of encouraging those students to take the action that they need in terms of actually submitting, you know, those college applications, FAFSA, et cetera. Um, and then assign them homework. So during that meeting, you know, whenever you've asked them stuff, um, depending on, you know, your caseload, whether or not you're going to be able to pull them back in later or not, um, just go ahead and maybe share with them a checklist, um, like a senior checklist of these are all the things that you need to do. In the state of North Carolina, they have to do the RDS, which is a whole other application to determine residency. 
then they have to complete the FAFSA. All of our students have to do that. Then there's the actual college application, the scholarships, the essay writing, all of those things. So there are a lot of websites that already have these checklists good to go for you. So you can just print off, hand them to the student, and then they, at least somebody has given them some kind of a guidance. Um, and then you can assign that homework. And if you think that you you know will have time to kind of follow up with them, then you can you know let them know. And three weeks, I want to see you and have X, Y, Z things done, but really kind of putting that responsibility back on the student. Um, for our large caseloads, of course, group advising is a really great way to kind of go about this as well. Sometimes our students are already are just traveling in, pot, in packs with their friends. So that's also a good time to just kind of ask all of them, what are you guys thinking about doing? And that way the friends can also kind of hold each other accountable, hopefully. Um, incorporate your partners in tag teaming meetings. So this is something that has been really great for our program is that our school counselors will meet with the seniors. They'll talk about their credits and their graduation requirements. Then they'll just walk them over to the college advisor and then they'll have that conversation with them. So if you don't have a college advisor, consider maybe who could kind of help you to tag team those students if you don't necessarily have that time to be having that conversation yourself. So some examples here could be, you know, like your CDC, um, other school counselors, um, some teachers also serve as senior advisors, you know what resource you have at your school. So maybe kind of trying to identify who could be the person that could kind of help with that if this might work for you. Um, so our in-school initiatives. So some of our schools we've noticed, like they'll have an extended lunch period or there's time built in the school day for clubs to meet. Um, so some things that our advisors are doing is kind of using those cl that club time or that extended lunch period to offer just kind of like, this is the time for seniors to come in and ask the questions that they have, or we're going to actually get things done. We're going to actually start working on our college applications. We're going to have, you know, admissions representatives come and visit. Some universities even offer on-site admissions. So that could be another really great way to kind of expose our students to college um, and get to learn about it from somebody else. Um, so just kind of like really utilizing like those opportunities of like that mass dissemination of information. Um, our advisors also do work with their teachers to do classroom presentations. I know that this might feel like a little bit, you know, you, you again, you know what, what time you have and don't have. But this is something that has really proved to actually be very fruitful for our advisors. And we've seen a huge increase in FAFSA completion as a result of this. Even with last year, with nationally, the FAFSA uh, completion rates dropping 12%, our program actually increased FAFSA submissions. So this definitely works. And what we did is have our advisors go into the classes prepare, you know, those classes like the day before with a, you know, you need your social security number. This is the information that you need to bring the next day. And then they're actually working on creating their FSA IDs in class. Um, after that, they worked with their school counselors and their admin to um, kind of like create a Google form. Students are putting what their username and password are in that Google form. And then there you go, like the whole school counseling department has access to that to help the student to log back in whenever the FAFSA actually opens and they can go back in and actually work on submitting their FAFSA. Um, we've done this too, if you guys are in North Carolina with RDS completion, and that's been a really great way to just kind of get everybody up to speed and, and done with these kinds of things. Um, if you're in North Carolina, we do have Countdown to College. So that is in the month of October. The whole month is Countdown to College. And so it's kind of like every week is um, dedicated towards, you know, RDS completion or creating their FSA IDs or actually submitting college applications. And then there's College Application Week where participating institutions waive their college application fees so that way students can apply for free. Um, so if your state has this, you know, um, this is a really, really, really great way to kind of help to enhance that college going culture at your school and turn it into something that is not just like you're taking this on. Really loop in the school admin 
um, and just other, you know, teachers, everybody else. So that way, this is kind of like a school initiative. And that's going to really kind of help to bring attention and awareness to this opportunity. We get teachers involved by, um, you know, the admin will allow them to wear jeans and their college t-shirt all week long. Um, so students kind of know something's going on with that. Um, sometimes students help their teachers uh, with like a door decorating competition. Teachers are decorating their door um, like with their alma mater. And so again, just kind of like increasing that college exposure. We've also seen sometimes like a spirit week similar to homecoming, but it's kind of like dress up as you know, the career that you want to be in, um, like for one day or wear your favorite college t-shirt for the next day. Um, but really kind of trying to get students excited about like this new initiative could just, just that in itself could kind of help students to think about college. Um, and then these are the other things too, bulletin boards. Students like to work on bulletin boards. So don't feel like that's something that you need to take on. Um, you can just give students your vision and have them run with it. But this has been a really helpful thing, too, and just kind of encouraging students to actually go and submit college applications. For every college application they submit, they might get like a star on a bulletin board with their name on it, with the school that they applied to. Uh, maybe they get announced on the morning announcements, or maybe we shout them out on social media for, you know, these are our top application submitters. Um, but just kind of finding ways to like celebrate the students that are taking advantage of those initiatives. And then our advisors also do um, put on decision day. So this is basically like at the end of the, the year, you know, kind of towards graduation when seniors are already just like in an excited, like excited celebratory mood. Um, our schools are hosting these decision days to really just celebrate that our seniors have made these big decisions of what they're doing after high school. So a lot of times we see that they do um, include not only four-year bound and two-year bound students, but also our workforce bound students, our military bound students, but really just kind of celebrating the fact that they have a plan and they've committed to that. Um, and then inviting, you know, the others, the other students so that way they can kind of see like, okay, what am I going to do when it's my turn and getting excited about getting celebrated when it is their turn. Here's just a couple of, of photos from some of our um, our advisors just kind of in action, doing the work, um, either kind of having students come to the library or they go to the classrooms to kind of get these things done, um, inviting admissions representatives to just kind of share that information on their behalf, uh, just taking over bulletin boards. So again, like that college exposure is happening for the students. Um, pennants, things like that, you guys can totally do for your school. Um, family workshops is another big one that we've seen some great success with. Um, one of our schools, they already had like a senior night. And so basically our college advisor just seamlessly fit into that existing event by just presenting like a College 101 information presentation at the end of that. And so if your school does have that, like a senior night or senior assembly where you guys are talking about, you know, graduation requirements, this is what you need to do to walk, this is how you order your cap and gown, et cetera, just make sure that you're, you try to use those opportunities to tie in post-secondary actions as well. While you already have their attention, let's go ahead and talk about the things that they should be doing to prepare for a life after high school. Um, some feedback that we've gotten from parent panels in the past um, are that the College 101 information happening senior year is too late. We need to know sooner than that. So what we've started to do is whenever we are hosting these College 101 nights, opening it up to the entire school and seeing, you know, really like a variety of families with, you know, ninth graders all the way up to the 12th graders coming to learn about this information. This is really going to help you all out in the long run because now they're starting to learn earlier and we don't have to really kind of educate them towards the end whenever maybe it's too late for them to, you know, pick up their GPA. Um, and then don't feel like you have to be the expert on all of the things. You have experts living in your communities if you don't consider yourself an expert on FAFSA completion or the RDS or just anything college related, essay writing, scholarships, financial aid in general. Um, so your community colleges, 
your other college access organizations in your community. Um, State Employees Credit Union has been a really great um, partner for us too and just kind of helping with like FAFSA nights and things like that. So just kind of identifying those experts in your communities that could just come and do these presentations for you. So you just set it up, you market it, but then somebody else is going to come and and uh, share that information for like on your behalf. Um, and then again, this is kind of like based off of the need that you're seeing. So if there's like a lot of misinformation about the affordability of college, and you know that the majority of your students, you know, qualify for financial aid, then it's probably a good idea to get people in there talking about the Pell Grant. Um, you, you know what your students need. So kind of identifying what it is that is preventing students from actually taking action and then sharing that information to um, just kind of have them to relearn, you know, what is actually correct. Um, and so lastly, just again, like kind of relying on those collaborations and those partnerships, this should not be all on you. This is really like a whole school. Um, the whole school needs to be behind this in order for this to actually work. Um, I tell my advisors this all the time. You should not be the only ones that are that are doing this and working on this. This is a, a true partnership. So um, identify the accomplices. We're moving away from allies, okay? Allies are supporting, but an accomplice is actually getting down and dirty with you in the mud and they're doing it with you. So who are the people that you can actually count on to help you out um, in your schools to get that job done? So is there like a supportive teacher, administrator, again, your CDCs, uh, whoever that might be at your school, just identify who that might be so that way you can feel that you have some in-school support um, and somebody else to kind of share the load with as you guys are planning these events, doing the advising, et cetera. Um, and then of course, encourage your leadership to get on board and our experience, you know, principals and, and assistant principals, of course they have to, you know, um, they have to answer to the district. The district has their own goals for their schools a lot of times there are some some goals tied to FAFSA completion, scholarship dollars earned. So this fits in nicely already. So just kind of talking about, you know, the like the potential successes that can come from these initiatives and, and then kind of helping with, you know, pushing out volunteers. Like if you need volunteers for your events, like maybe offering some kind of incentives for teachers to actually come through and help out. Um, but yeah, this will work a lot better when everybody is kind of on board and is taking this on as their responsibility as well. And then of course, like enhancing those community partnerships. Um, so here in North Carolina, we've got my future NC, the regional folks that do the traveling for my future NC, they just could not be like any more excited and enthusiastic go to go and do like those trainings and and meet with district leaders and uh, school counselors and everybody who's actually doing the work. So they're a really great resource. Um, our CFNC regional representatives are also really great resources. Um, your community college, they of course are recruiting from your high school. So would love to get some FaceTime in with your students anyway. Um, and of, of course, our university reps as well, they have, you know, travel budgets to go and, and visit schools in their regions. So they're already looking to come and, and visit. So really kind of just learning how they can help you out when they're coming to visit, if it's, you know, supporting these events or, or whatever it might be. And lastly, just, you know, use your resources. There are a bunch of different things online. Um, for here in North Carolina, we've got CFNC Pro Tools. That's going to help you to track your college application progress for your students. So will the common application. Um, they've also got CFNC in Espanol. So they have handouts in English and in Spanish that are both like those checklists for what you need to do sophomore, junior, senior year of high school. Um, information about like what you need for the RDS, what you need for the FAFSA how to fill out your FAFSA. Really everything is already there. So you definitely don't need to reinvent the wheel. The last thing you need is, you know, to spend time like creating a, a handout if, if it already exists. Um, so just kind of identifying where those things live. 
Um, and then just having those on hand to hand out to students so that way they can hopefully take that initiative and follow through. Um, and then of course the finish the FAFSA tracker is really, really helpful too. And uh, kind of understanding like where we fall in terms of FAFSA completion, the students that still need to complete and then just following up with those students and parents to make sure that our, our students are actually applying for financial aid, if especially, you know, financial aid and, and college costs are really like going to be the determining factor of whether or not they actually commit. So I'm going to go ahead and stop here and see if there are any questions. Uh, any questions, folks? Uh, if, if, if you'd like to submit some questions, we'll be glad to pass those along to Veronica. Uh, again, thank you so much, Veronica. Really appreciate all the, that wonderful information and some, some really good ideas there, uh, particularly yeah. the partnering and the collaborations. I think that's uh, kind of a better together attitude there. That, that's mm -hmm. good. Yep, definitely. So counselors do a lot. There's already a lot on y'all's plate. So um, definitely ask for the help that you need for sure and figure out who can kind of help support um, as you are trying to make sure that your students are getting the support that they need. All right. Not a question, but some uh, kudos there as well. Just, you know, uh, information was very helpful. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so I, there is a question here. Um, so th I'll just go ahead and, and read it as is. It says, you know, we have two CAC advisors in Johnston County, both do. They're amazing, game changer for our school counseling workload and communities that they serve. Uh, we would love to expand. How can we connect to UNC Wilmington's uh, uh, advising board? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Um... Yes, expansion is definitely something that we would love to do. Um, and the way that it kind of works is everybody has territories. We kind of came later in the game. So we've got kind of the southeastern region. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in just kind of connecting and learning a little bit more, um, I'm going to drop my email here in the chat. Um, I will just also say all of the College Advising Corps programs are grant funded um, and it's year to year. So every year we're just kind of crossing our fingers that we can continue doing the good work at the schools that we're at. Um, but sometimes, you know, our national office is interested in, in expanding and comes into an influx of funds. So that's when we kind of like go back to the drawing board and see what schools are interested in in hosting an advisor. So um, I just dropped my email there in the chat. So feel free to reach out. You could also just Google UNCW College Advising Corps. Our website will show up and uh, my contact information is also there. All right. Thanks for the question. Thanks for the answer. All right. So I, I, if, if, if all hearts and minds are on court, I think we'll go ahead and transition to our second half. Again, thank you so much, Veronica, for that that half of the presentation and your time today. Um, got some good tidbits there. And now uh, we would like to transition and in introducing Lily from uh, College Vine. Uh, everybody wave bye to Veronica, see you later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Lily, please uh, take it away. Awesome, thank you. Thanks so much for having me. So today I'll be sharing with you all how you can save hours and hours of your time by using the free resources on College Vine. In particular, how all you counselors can save about 80% of the time you spend writing rec letters by using our AI rec letter assistant and brag sheet. And then I'll also be sharing some free student resources for your students to make admissions easier and quicker for them as well. And just as a quick intro, my name is Lily. I'm the growth manager at College Vine. And basically that means that my goal is to share these free resources with as many counselors and students as possible. So as a little bit of background on what we do at College Vine, in case you're not familiar with us, our goal is to increase access to higher education for all students. As you all know, the students with fewer resources, financial resources, 
uh, often don't know what sorts of paths are available to them and they end up getting into less prestigious schools than the students with more money. So our goal is to make sure that students of all backgrounds have access to the resources they need to get into their dream schools, go on to their dream paths. Uh, and so to that end, we are a free platform making admissions easier for both counselors and students. Uh, like I mentioned, our counselor resources are our brag sheet and AI rec letter assistant, which I will be demoing for you all. And then the student resources are our admissions calculator recruitment network, and then our AI tutor and advisor called Sage. And uh, some of you actually already have students on College Vine. In the last admission cycle, one and two college bound seniors made a College Vine profile to get recruited by colleges. So this is something that a lot of your students are already familiar with. So let me start with the counselor resources. Uh, like I mentioned, we have our brag sheet and AI rec letter assistant. Uh, this is 100% free. We do get questions from counselors asking us, you know, how is this possible? Uh, a lot of times AI does cost money, but our goal is to support counselors in supporting their students. So these tools are totally free for you all. Uh, the tools are also FERPA compliant. So we know that brag sheets and rec letters often have to include some sensitive information. So we just want to ensure, assure you all that whatever the student enters in their brag sheet is private between you and that student. Uh, based on the thousands of counselors who have used the tool and our, our surveys with them, we have found that this cuts down rec letter writing time by about 80%. And uh, students are also not aware of the use of AI. That's another concern that counselors often have. You know, if I send this brag sheet to my student, do they know that I'm gonna be using AI to write a draft? Uh, that's not the case. The form looks just like a Google form. Not anywhere is it written that, you know, this is part of an AI tool. And now I actually want to walk you through the process of using our tool. So I'm gonna go over to the landing page if you do not have an account. So this is uh, at collegemind.com slash rec letters. And I will be sharing these links and QR codes later. So don't worry about that. So as you can see here, this is the, the rec letter tool. This is what you can test if you do not have a free account yet. So you can see on the side here, you start here, you can enter the name of the student you're recommending and then your relationship to the student. So this is also available for teachers. If you have teacher friends who are also overwhelmed with rec letters, you can also share it with them. And then you select what this uh, letter is for. So it can be anything from general college admissions to scholarships to specific schools or programs. And then you go ahead and fill in some basic information about the student. So their profile and educational goals. If you have an existing brag sheet, you could paste it in here. Uh, and then there's also information about the student's background and environment. And then you have some custom customization options. So you can even paste a past letter as an example to match your own writing style. And you can select length options as well as tone. We know sometimes rec letters are more of reference letters because not every student is the best student out there. Uh, other times they, they really are the best student you've seen in 10 years. So we wanna make sure there's tone options for you as well. And then finally, some additional space for additional instruction. So maybe you want the, the tool to highlight a specific story about the student. So uh, we also have a sample brag sheet here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select that. This is just some pre-filled information so that we can show you how the rec letter tool works without manually copying and pasting in a bunch of information. So the student's name is Mia Jones. Uh, and you can see this was the brag sheet demo. And then I can go ahead uh, oops, that, I think it's because there's some information that wasn't filled in there uh, on the side, but it should typically look like this. And it'll say, uh, this is all based on the information in the brag sheet. And you can see that the rec letter generated just took about 30 seconds. And um, I think that was a, a glitch just because it wasn't loading in the brag sheet, but this is this is better. Um, you you want to make sure basically that there is enough information in the brag sheet and that you fill out enough information here because you know it, it cannot generate a letter without a, a sufficient information. But you can see this is all based on the brag sheet, based on the information about Mia Jones's extracurriculars and academics, as well as some of the obstacles that she faced. Uh, but basically, you can play around with this if you do want to save the rec letters and the brag sheets 
to your account, that's where you would want to sign up for a free account. And so I'm going to go ahead and log in so I can show you how you can use the, the brag sheet yourself and edit it and then see all the brag sheets submitted by your students and saved by them. So this is where you go to the dashboard. And from here, this is where you can see all the students you've invited, their brag sheets that they filled out. If they haven't filled it out yet, there will be a reminder button as well as the rec letter that you have generated for them in the past. And if you haven't generated it yet, you will be able to click generate letter. And then the brag sheet itself is fully customizable. And again, like I said, it's FERPA compliant. Students aren't aware of the use of AI. You can go ahead and edit the instructions and you can also edit all the questions. You can delete them. You can also add your own questions. Basically, you can make this as detailed as you want. And then from here, you can go ahead and preview what it will look like when it is sent to the student. It looks really just like a Google form. And then to share the brag sheet, you want to go ahead and click share, and you can either share it with a link or you can send it by email. And that's where you could enter your caseload here and just make sure to separate the emails by commas or line breaks. And you can just do that all in one go. I know a lot of you have large caseloads. You don't want to be inviting these students one by one. So uh, the brag sheet is fully editable and it is also connected to the rec letter tool. So when your student fills out that brag sheet, you will be notified by email and that's where you can go into your dashboard and click generate letter. And when that's all connected like that, your student fills out the brag sheet on College Find, uh, everything is a lot simpler because you don't have to be manually copying and pasting that information into the tool. And on the student side, when they get their invitation, they will be asked to make a very basic account to fill out the brag sheet. And I know a lot of students don't like creating accounts, but they will actually like creating a College Vine account because once they finish that brag sheet, they'll have the option to extend that account and access a lot of free resources that will help their admissions process, which I will later uh, walk through as well. But before I go back to the presentation, I wanted to just stop and see if anyone had any questions on this demo portion, because then I can go ahead and, and show you while I'm still here. Okay, yeah, that's actually, that's what the, the question I just got um, for how this is received is the, the next question I'll answer in the presentation. Uh, so yes, if students have created their brag sheet in another platform, such as Naviance, you will have to go ahead and copy and paste that manually into the rec letter tool. You can, um, you can use the rec letter tool still, but there's not a particular upload button. There was just that one spot uh, in the rec letter tool. Let's just go here and show you uh, where you could paste the brag sheet. So this, this is actually, it already has a brag sheet, but if I were to log out and then uh, show you, Rec letters, you would go ahead and paste the brag sheet details here. Awesome. Any other questions before I get back to the, the presentation? So I think there's one other question. How is this received by university admission staff and, and received them? I'm not sure if they mean technically the letter getting them or more so AI in general, like how university admissions folks perceive counselors using AI to do their letters. Yeah, if it's that, if it's how they perceive it, uh, that's actually next in the presentation. So I'll go ahead and uh, move on, move back to the presentation. Okay, so yeah, that's a very common question that we get from counselors. Uh, again, we, we know that counselors want to make sure that they're helping their students in this process and not hindering them in any way. So we have talked to some admissions committees and just pulled out a couple quotes from admissions directors. Uh, so um, yeah, is it okay to use AI for rec letters? Uh, we we talked to these admissions committees and the assistant director of admissions at University of the Pacific specifically said, as long as the thought and stories are original, we have no problem with counselors using AI to draft rec letters. In fact, proper format and original insight are the key factors of a strong rec letter, which College Vines rec letter assistant can help you build upon. And then Serena Holder, the director of admissions at Longwood University, said, as an admissions officer, I rely on rec letters to better understand each student's journey. College Vine's rec letter assistant makes drafting more efficient, so counselors can focus on the heart and substance of their students' stories. So uh, basically, the general consensus among admissions committees is that it's okay to use AI 
in rec letters. Uh, the primary focus for them is really just understanding the students' stories. And so to, to UA, use AI as effectively as possible, we just have a couple recommendations. We, we recommend that you use the rec letter system as a first draft. So you, you wanna go in and edit it later on. You wanna go in and make sure that the content is accurate. If you wanna edit the language to be more of your voice and your tone, uh, we, we highly encourage that. And even with those edits, uh, the tool is still saving you about 80% of your time. And then we also encourage you to invite your students to fill out their brag sheets on CollegeVine just to ensure you have the, the necessary and most accurate details. And that also leads to the most personalization when you have all those details about your students already connected to, to CollegeVine. And then we, we talk to the counselors as well who have used our tools. We've had thousands of counselors use this tool over the last year and just wanted to share some of the feedback we got from them. So this particular counselor said it'll save me hours and hours and hours and hours of my time. They wrote over 60 rec letters last year, which I'm sure many of you can relate to. Uh, this other counselor said it will save them significant time and allow them to focus more on helping students with applications while still providing them a rec letter that sounds like me. Another counselor said it was very simple and easy to use, the platform in general. This counselor found the tool accurate to their style of writing. And then this counselor said the letter the assistant produced took seconds to generate. And if I wrote the letter, it would have taken me hours. And then finally, this counselor said that it was really helpful when addressing the more delicate topics that you often have to kind of figure out how to approach in those rec letters. And we've also gotten feedback that the tool is especially helpful for students that you, you don't know as well. And then students uh, who've asked you kind of last minute for a recommendation letter, which we all know, unfortunately, happens been sometimes. So in terms of how much time counselors can actually save, uh, based on our surveys, we found that counselors spend about an hour and a half to two hours per rec letter. And then the, you saw that the time spent to generate a letter was about 30 seconds. And then let's say you spend 15 to 30 minutes editing that, that rec letter draft. You, you save significant time. So if you're writing 100 rec rec letters in, in a year, that's 125 to 175 hours saved. And that's, you know, several work weeks, but we also know that you counselors are often spending your evenings and your weekends writing these rec letters. So it's not just the work time that you get back where you can be working directly with your students. You also get your personal time back as well. So in terms of next steps for using that rec letter assistant, uh, we encourage you to sign up for your free account. That's where you can keep track of, you know, the students you've invited, their rack sheets and their rec letter, uh, rec letters that you've generated. And then we also encourage you to claim your spots. There's just a, a form that we ask you to fill out so that we can prepare for the fall and understand uh, the demand that we'll be seeing this fall. Uh, we do expect hundreds of thousands of uh, rec letters to be generated this fall. And so we encourage you to send out your brag sheet invitations as soon as possible, just to avoid that, that peak usage, which is probably coming up in a few weeks. We know uh, those early action, early decision deadlines are coming on November 1st. So the sooner that you can get those invitations out and your students fill those out, the, the better for you, better for us. Um, and then, like I mentioned, to fill out the brag sheet, students do have to create a basic account, but after they fill out that brag sheet, they'll have the option to extend their account and then access the rest of CollegeVine and use all those free resources. So I will be sharing these QR codes again uh, at the end, but the one on the left is to sign up for a free account. You'll just want to hit the login button on the top right and then, uh, or the sign up button, depending on if you're mobile or desktop, and then uh, the claim your spots is the, the form that we would love for you to fill out so we can plan ahead for the fall. But uh, next, I'm going to talk about the student resources on College Fine. So there are three particular ones I want to share with you. The first being our admissions calculator, which helps students build balanced college lists, the recruitment network, which connects students and colleges, and then Sage, our AI advisor, which answers the big and small questions when it comes to admissions. So the first resource, our admissions calculator, is our most popular student resource. This is where students can see their chances at over 1,600 schools. And this is based on them filling out a chancing profile with several data points on their academics and extracurriculars. And it will also tell students how to improve their profile at each school. So you can see 
Here, uh, this is a student's chances for Vanderbilt. They had an excellent GPA, strong coursework and test scores, but they could improve their extracurriculars. And this is unique to each school based on the profile, the average profile of accepted students. And so uh, the student will be basically able to see how they stack up at their dream schools. And it's, uh, it's unique based on each school. And students will also be able to see which schools are safeties, targets, or reaches. And that's something that I know students struggle a lot with because it's not just based on their the school's overall acceptance rate. It's based on, you know, how their profile stacks up to the average accepted student. And that's something I know counselors are often spending a lot of time helping their students with creating that balanced college list. So this is another area where you could potentially save some time by encouraging your student to use College Vine and then reviewing their results with them. Next, we have our recruitment network and direct admissions. So this is a little bit like LinkedIn for college admissions. So students can opt in their profile. This is opt-in only. We want to make sure students are in control of how their data is seen by colleges. And then from there, they can send or receive connection invitations from colleges and also chat with admissions officers, whether they have any questions or kind of just want to get their profile out there earlier on. And we also partner with a number of colleges who want to accept students just based on the merits of their profile and make admissions easier for students and families. And so that's our direct admissions program. Students can get accepted just by opting into this network and by co our college partners seeing their profiles. So that's, that's really a big deal because we all know how tough admissions is, how much work it is. So uh, the, the fact that students can just get some acceptances by sharing their profile is a, a really big deal for them. And finally, we have Sage, our AI advisor and tutor. This is an AI chatbot for college admissions and homework help. It can do a lot of things, but uh, some of the main functionalities it has is to provide feedback on essays, particularly college essays. So you can see a, a, a screenshot down here. It can also help students plan college finances. So that's another area where students and families might be very confused. So there's a lot of terminology, there's a lot of forms and deadlines, and uh, students sometimes don't even know that, you know, the more expensive schools can have a lot of financial aid. So this is where students uh, can get that information and guidance for free. Uh, Sage can also give tips on homework. And it can suggest ways for students to improve their chances because it, it is also connected to the student's chancing profile. And we've gotten feedback from counselors that this is a really great in terms of after hours advising. So, you know, Sage is available on the weekends and, and uh, after school. And Sage can also provide multilingual support. So you can chat with Sage in many different languages. I want to say there's around 30 languages it supports. So uh, we've just gotten feedback that this has been really helpful for, for students from, from counselors. And actually, if you have a free counselor account, you can also access Sage. It's collegevine.com slash AI. Uh, the other resources, if you wanted to explore those a little bit more, you would want to create a student account with a different email. And uh, we just don't recommend that you switch back and forth between a student and counselor profile because some of your data might disappear, especially on, on the student side. So um, yeah, if you do wanna look into the student resources a little bit more on your own time, I'd recommend creating a separate account for that. Um, but yeah, basically our goal is to support counselors and students as much as possible. Uh, if you have more questions for me, definitely happy to take them now. And again, these are the QR codes. If you wanna sign up for your free College Vine account, this is for the counselor account. Uh, and then if you want to just claim your brag sheet spots and rec letter generation spots, that's the QR code on the right. Uh, if you don't have a phone handy or QR code scanner, the links are up here. And then if you also have questions in, in the future, you're welcome to email me. My email is, is right here. Great. Thank you so much, Lily. Uh, any other questions from our audience? We're, we're, that would be a great time to submit those. Um, real quickly, I, I, I have a question. Um, of course. In the dashboard where you were generating the rec letter, uh, is there a possible to save different versions? Like for one is a general college admissions, one maybe for a specific scholarship, so, but for the same student. Is there a way to kind of do different versions of a rec letter and keep them all sort of organized by student? 
So um, currently there is not. Let me first, um, I can show you a workaround. Um, let me go back and try to find my the right window. One second. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, let me log back in. Yeah, so currently in the dashboard, you can only save one version, but there is a rec letter history. So uh, let's see here. So let's this is the rec letter for, for Maya. If you wanted to change this for a scholarship committee, we could regenerate that. And then um, you would see in your history here, my letters history, um, that once it generates, that it would show up in the history. So unfortunately it would, it would only, one of the versions, the, the first version that you generated would show up in the dashboard, but the other versions that you generated would show up in your rec letter history. Um, and we are definitely taking suggestions for improvements to the tool. So that's something I will add to the list. So All right. Would you be able to access both of those at a later time? Yeah, that's right. They'll both be in your history. So you just go to my letters. And so, yeah, so the one I just uh, generated is right here. Um, Very cool. Any other takers on questions for Lily from College Five? Did you, because um, we mostly talked about rec letters, but could you talk a little bit about, there was a little bit about uh, feedback on student essays about the the student side of things? Yeah, sure. Uh, any particular areas? So, that... I mean, I just, that's something that would save me a lot of time too, is is I'm starting to see AI tools on, um, it looked like it was in, within Sage, and I'm starting to see AI tools to help, you know, give students feedback on their actual essays, and that's something personally that would save me time as well, so. Yeah, sure. I mean, I could demo that um, as well. Mm -hmm. I can just, I can grab like a sample essay from one of our blog posts uh, and show you what it looks like. So, uh, let's grab something from here and yeah, basically, so you go in here and you can say review my essay and then it asks for the prompt and the essay. And then we could say, let's, let's do this essay. And this is common. Oh, this is an old prompt. So maybe let's do something that's a little bit newer. Okay. All right. So this is the essay, and then this is the prompt. Up. And then uh, basically Sage will give some overall feedback and then point out the strengths and then give you some suggestions as well as uh, what admissions would take away and then how it might impact your chances of admissions. And um, yeah, this is a tool that students have access to on their end, but counselors also have access to this as well um, if they go to collegevine.com slash AI. So, uh, and then as well on the student side, we have a peer essay review tool as well where students can give and get feedback from other students. Um, so there's also that human aspect too, if they wanted to um, just like see what another human student would would take away from their essay, but they're they're welcome to get this feedback. It's pretty much immediate from Sage. Was there anything else that you wanted to no, see? No, that's 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 amazing. That's yeah, thank you. And I just want to add to the audience too. I, I used College Vine's rec letter tool last year and I used it exactly like you said. You know, sometimes you're just staring at a break at a blank screen and it just kind of gets you going and gets you moving. And so to generate that initial letter, and then I would go in and edit it. And just depending on the student, if it's a student I knew really well at the end of the day, 25% of it may have still been written by College Mind and the rest me, but a student I didn't know as well, or that had, you know, it was a little bit lighter on extracurriculars and grades and things like that, then more of it might have been written by AI. So it, it saved me a lot of time. Um, so I, I found it to be a really, really good tool for me last year. I'm so glad it was really helpful. Any other questions? Well, I think you've touched on everything that the audience was looking for, Lily. So um, All right. questions, but thank you so very much for uh, sharing your time and expertise on this uh, growing field. And I'm sure as counselors start uh, 
you know, using it more and playing around with it more. And uh, we get feedback from college admissions folks. I think that was also pretty reassuring to hear that, um, you know, there's support from the other side of the desk uh, to utilize these tools in a responsible way, though. That's that's great to hear. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me today. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, I think that's a, a wrap, folks. Uh, we want to make sure we're respectful of your time, and we want to thank you so very much for uh, attending our SACAC webinar for public schools counselors. Hopefully, you've gathered some really good nuggets you can take back to your schools to help you uh, more efficiently, effectively manage large caseloads and leverage some of this new AI technology out there. Uh, you have the contact information for our panelists. Feel free to reach out to them as questions, concerns uh, arise. Uh, also, uh, you know, we want to thank SACAC for allowing us this opportunity to serve and uh, bring this information to you and, and develop you professionally. Uh, if you have questions, concerns about, uh, you know, uh, or feedback for this presentation, we would love to hear from you. Our email and contact information is on a SACAC website on the events calendar, uh, or if you're interested in volunteering with us, or we have some other ideas for uh, other uh, PD events, please let us know. Uh, we would love to do something valuable and of service to you all. So thank you so very much. Uh, we'll see you soon. Take care.